Welcome to our latest episode, Americans Can't Save Taxes by Going Offshore. In this episode, I'm going to be talking about why Americans can't save taxes by going offshore. Listen, from time to time, clients contact me wanting to know how I can help them save their US, save on their US taxes by going offshore. Last week was no exception. I had a potential client contact me wanting to know how I could help them save on their US taxes by going offshore. Many Americans, and apparently some US tax advisors, are under the illusion that you can shove money into an offshore trust or corporation and save on US taxes. I'm here to bust that myth. You can't. Look. Welcome to the Wealth Uncensored Podcast. Straight talk about everything that impacts your wealth. In each episode, I share what I've learned through my own experience and two decades of helping high net worth clients structure their affairs to minimize taxes and protect their assets for the next generation. I'll also feature special guests who are experts in their own field, sharing their knowledge and experience to help you protect what's yours. I'm your host, Jimmy Sexton. Let's dive into today's show. Look, that individuals don't know that you can't put money in an offshore company or trust and saves taxes on it is understandable. They're not tax experts. But I'm always surprised by the number of lawyers, accountants, and tax advisors that don't know this is impossible. The drafters of U.S. tax laws thought of whatever your strategy is and legislated the benefit right out of it. I say this because whenever I get one of these clients on the phone, they think they can outsmart the legislators. It seems like I go through the same exercise every time. Well, what if I do this? Well, no, and here's why. Well, what about this? Nope. Well, how about this? Also, no, it's not gonna work. They thought of it and legislated the benefit out of it. The only way that you can save on US taxes by going offshore is to illegally evade taxes, in which case, I'm not your guy and you're probably going to get caught and go to jail. I think many Americans have just had their brains warped by Hollywood. They've seen the movies, they've seen shows like Ozark and they think that you can just go offshore and not pay taxes. In this episode, I'm going to explain why going offshore won't save you taxes. First, I'm going to talk about foreign corporations. So, foreign corporations can be classified in one of two ways, as what's known as a controlled foreign corporation and what is known as a non-controlled foreign corporation. A controlled foreign corporation is a foreign corporation that is more than 50% owned by U.S. persons. But in calculating the ownership percentage, you only count U.S. shareholders who own 10% or more of the foreign corporation. So let's say you have 11 shareholders, all Americans, that equally own a foreign corporation. Each one of them would have less than 10% ownership. None of them would be considered a U.S. shareholder for controlled foreign corporation purposes. And therefore, more than 50% of the foreign corporation is not owned by U.S. shareholders, although all the shareholders are American. Again, a controlled foreign corporation is a foreign corporation more than 50% owned by U.S. shareholders, U.S. shareholders being those Americans owning 10% or more of the foreign corporation. Prior to the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act in 2017, a controlled foreign corporation, I should say the shareholders of a controlled foreign corporation that earned active income. So, you know, not like rents, royalties, dividends, stuff like this, but income from operating a business, taxes on those profits could be deferred. So basically, if you were a U.S. shareholder of a controlled foreign corporation and that controlled foreign corporation had profits from in, in operating inactive business, you as the U.S. shareholder didn't have to pay any taxes on those profits until you received an actual dividend distribution from that foreign corporation. You could essentially defer tax on the profits within a foreign corporation. But again, this is prior to the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act of 2017. After that, deferral basically became impossible. There's two applicable regimes here, okay? You have subpart F and you have guilty. If you're a US shareholder of a controlled foreign corporation and that controlled foreign corporation earns passive income, rents, royalties, dividends, interest, and capital gains, those profits are gonna be attributed to the US shareholders and the US shareholders are gonna have to pay tax on those profits whether or not they actually receive any dividends from the controlled foreign corporation. Now, 
If the profits in the foreign corporation are not from passive income, then they are not subject to attribution to the U.S. shareholders through subpart F. But they are subject to attribution to the U.S. shareholders through guilty. So even if the controlled foreign corporation is operating an active business and not earning any passive income, the U.S. shareholders are going to be liable for tax on the profits of the foreign corporation whether or not they actually get it. In addition, you're going to have some significant reporting requirements. You're most likely going to have to file Form 5471 with your income tax return to report the information about the controlled foreign corporation. You're also going to have to file Form 926 if you contribute contributed property to the controlled foreign corporation and potentially Form 8938 depending on the value of the controlled foreign corporation. And you might have to file uh, an FBAR, the Report of Foreign Bank and Other Financial Accounts, if your ownership in the foreign corporation is more than 50% or you're a signer on the account. Let's say you're an American and you own part of a foreign corporation that is not a controlled foreign corporation. So we're talking about a corporation that is not more than 50% owned by U.S. shareholders. Again, those owning 10% or more of the foreign corporation. If that company is earning passive income or is mostly earning passive income or most of its assets are held for the production of passive income, it's most likely going to be classified as a passive foreign investment company or PFIC for short. Now the good news is the profits of the PFIC are not going to be attributed to American shareholders as it might be with a controlled foreign corporation, but when you go to sell the shares in your passive foreign investment company, you're going to be subject to a very punitive tax regime that is, one, going to tax the sale as ordinary income, but it's also going to tack on an interest charge for taxes that potentially should have been paid in prior years on the appreciation of that stock. So a lot of times the way PFICs are taxed, there's just no financial benefit to, to owning them at the end of the day because the taxes wipe out any profit. The only way Americans can defer taxes inside of a foreign corporation is if it is a non-CFC. So you can defer taxes if it's a non-CFC and also a non-PFIC. This would be a foreign corporation that is not more than 50% owned by U.S. shareholders and earns active income. In that situation, taxes can be deferred until the American gets an actual distribution of dividends from that foreign corporation. Again, you're going to have some filing requirements. You might have to file 5471, Form 926, and 8938. Now let's talk about foreign truck because this is the one where people seem to think there's a lot of taxes to be saved. They're not. If a U.S. person transfers assets to a foreign trust and that foreign trust either has U.S. beneficiaries or is permitted to have U.S. beneficiaries and permitted to have U.S. beneficiaries is construed very broadly, right? So let's say the foreign trust doesn't have U.S. beneficiaries today, but it could be amended to include U.S. beneficiaries in the future, that trust would be considered to have U.S. beneficiaries. So an American contributes assets to a foreign trust, and that foreign trust either has U.S. beneficiaries or could have U.S. beneficiaries, then the U.S. transferor of assets to that U.S. trust is continued to be treated as the owner of the assets they transfer to that foreign trust for U.S. income tax purposes. So that means any income that the assets transferred to the trust earned, the U.S. transferor is going to be liable for U.S. income taxes on that. And if those assets are housed within the trust in a foreign corporation or something like that, then they're also going to have information reporting like Form 5471, 8858, or 8865. In addition, the American is going to have to file Form 3520 and 3520A with respect to the foreign trust in order to report the foreign trust and its financial activities. Now, you have a further issue that when assets are contributed to the foreign trust, is if it's treated as a completed gift, you could be liable for gift tax. And if it was a completed gift, when you die, there's a mark-to-market tax on the appreciation of the assets in the trust. And if it was not a completed gift when you put the assets in the foreign trust, then the assets are still taxed in your estate when you die. Basically, 
you transfer assets to a foreign corporation or a foreign trust, you're still paying taxes on the income earned within that foreign corporation or the foreign trust. Foreign partnerships and foreign disregarded entities also don't give you any deferral because they are flow through entities and deferral is not possible. And one of the things I'd like to mention is without proper planning, going offshore can actually increase your US taxes. And in addition to increasing your taxes, there's a lot of compliance risk associated with reporting your offshore income assets and structures to the IRS. Filing these complex forms and computing the tax on the foreign income generally requires the help of an experienced and knowledgeable US tax preparer. Such tax preparers are more expensive than a normal US tax preparer, so be prepared to spend thousands of dollars a year just on tax preparation to prepare the necessary forms to report your foreign income assets and structures. And the penalties for failing to file these forms or making mistakes when filing them are very, very significant. Additionally, you may be increasing your risk of audit by having offshore structures. And even if you didn't do anything wrong, you're still gonna have to defend the audit which is expensive because you're going to need a tax attorney that understands all of this international tax stuff in order to be able to effectively defend you. It usually makes more sense, in my opinion, from a tax perspective, for Americans to stick to U.S. structures unless there's a legitimate business reason for not sticking to it. You're doing business abroad or the investment precludes U.S. individuals and entities, which means you have to invest through a foreign entity. Foreign trusts and foundations generally offer more asset protection than their U.S. equivalents. So that might make sense to get more asset protection. Also, many U.S. asset managers are, are very U.S. centric. So you might be able to obtain better returns by diversifying your investments globally, and you may need uh, to do that through an offshore asset manager. Those are some of the reasons why it might make sense to go offshore for non-tax reasons. But in the end, only you can decide if going offshore is right for you. So just to recap, this that's why Americans can't save taxes by going offshore. We've talked about the risks and advantages of going offshore and the tax implications of doing so. I hope you found this episode useful. Also, I did a guide called the International Tax Form Filing Guide, which goes through all of these different forms that need to be filed to disclose foreign income, assets, and structures. I'll put a link in the description so you have a better understanding of what's required when you do go offshore. Thank you. Thank you for joining me on Wealth Uncensored, where we help you minimize taxes and protect your wealth for the next generation. If you like our show, be sure to subscribe and leave a review. And if you have any questions or suggestions for future episodes, we'd love to hear from you. You can email us at info at esquiregroup.com. And don't forget to visit Esquire Group's website for more information on how we can help you secure your wealth. I'll be dropping knowledge again next week. Don't forget to join us.